end. I made mistakes before. All right, here we go. We're live on Facebook. We're live into our community here for, for the region. We've got Nikki Klein with us from Florida. And she's not only one of the nicest, uh, most amazing human beings you'll ever meet, she's also a mega agent. Yeah, I know you're nodding your head yes, but you know you're okay. simply sweet. Thank you. So, it's so, so <laughs> kind. And I think that's what originally connected us. I'm like, whoa, she's, she's so down to earth and, and so kind. And she's awesome at real estate too. So that definitely stood out. So thank you for being here. What areas do you specifically cover and how long have you been with KW? I cover Palm Beach County, um, Boca Raton, Florida, Delray Beach, Florida, West Palm Beach, Florida, um, pretty much where everybody wants to move to in Florida. That's where I cover. Nice. So if you're um, thinking of Florida, just send it over. Think of Florida, think of Nikki. And if it's <laughs> not right. me, then I know who it should go to. So just, That's so funny. Um, okay. So have I, I've got my license about six years ago now, and I've been with Kel Williams the whole time. Oh, nice. In Florida? In Florida. I moved to Florida, didn't know anybody, wanted to work, got into real estate, and the rest is history. All right. All right. So let's start with that. Mm -hmm. What got you into real estate? So I didn't have a great experience when I went to buy my house. And I, like, truthfully, I was thinking, well, if this is the standard of service that most people are getting, because when I was moving to Florida, I wanted to purchase a home and I called multiple agents and I'm like, hi, I have money and would like to buy a house. And either nobody called me back or they were too busy or I just could not believe it. And I said that I cannot be the only person that's having this situation. So I really thought, I thought this was like, you know, a really great way to get into back into working. I'd see how it, how it would go. And, um, you know, I love to negotiate. So I was like, well, this, there's probably something to this. So let me, let me give it a shot. All right. With that then now fast forward to where you're at now, what are some of the, or what is one of the challenges that you have with this business? What is like, uh, what just like drags you down sometimes? <sighs> Honestly, it's like some, sometimes it's the other agents with the, process or the complaining or the, you know, you have to really focus on your mindset in this business. How do you do that? How do you focus on your mindset to keep it sharp? Well, I work on myself daily. So I am constantly trying to make myself a better version today than I was yesterday. What can I do if I, you know, I believe that we are made up I believe we're spiritual beings having a human existence, right? So for me, I feel like I'm on earth to kind of make the world a better place. Make, and by doing that, it's by making myself better. So I'm constantly learning and growing and seeing, you know, what resonates with me and then learning on that track. So I'm always trying to look at other people and self-lead from that. Ooh, I love that. All right, let's go. I read a lot. I read a lot. I listen to podcasts. I listen to mentors. I, I listen to people who have an open mindset. I've released beliefs, right? Because beliefs give you limiting thought process. So if you can open your mind and have, a, uh, have um, an idea that there are different points of view, you're going to open up your mind to possibility. Yeah, I think that that's a really great point that you make where you look at it and you're like, okay, well, there's not just one way of looking at things my way, right? And I think you're right. When we look at real estate or any industry, but just real estate here, you come across agents that make it really challenging to work with because they, they're not really seeing all possible angles. Nobody can, right? Correct. But you just have to be open to it and they're not. So it well, challenges also, us. There's a lot of ego attached to it, right? So for me, what I believe is that we have an egoic mind and the egoic mind is based on the stories of our past, right? Things that we grew up with. So, you know, um, the, like if I got stung by a bee when I was 10, I'm going to have a different relationship with bees than you would, right? That's a story that's been created in my head. So that's called the ego. That's your ego. Mm -hmm. And then we have our soul, our spirit, which is what our true calling is. This is, this is what I believe. And so I think that a lot of people lead with their ego versus 
what's true to them, like what's the, what really is true. So for me, what I've been trying to do is unravel the stories from my past to, to really be true to who I am at the core. Well, I love that. So then let's go into what happened over the last seven months, six months, right? Where you're trying to unravel this, this you, this version of you. How did COVID-19 hit you at the beginning and how did it help you in your journey so far? So it, I think for me, it has helped me slow down, right? And it's helped me really look at who I am and um, my surroundings and what's important to me. So I've just taken a step back, taken a breath. I think that what happens is when we get into this business, it's go, 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 go. And what this pandemic has done is just made us stop, right? And reflect. And we have to now look internally for most of us, if you choose to. And so it's just been um, an amazing learning experience. I, I, I've done a lot of self growth over these past. That's my dog loving your story. That's not my sign. I don't have a dog. (laughs) But maybe this is like a sign that I should get one now. Um, So no, so for me, it's it's really been a massive growth experience. It's a constant, you know, I think that people think, oh, when you're on a growth journey, everything should be positive. But really, it's the opposite. It's kind of like you're in this cocoon and it's uncomfortable. And it's like, you're really digging into the things that trigger you, right? So that you can grow from that and figure out like why what what can i do to make sure that if i'm in this situation again i don't feel that way so i base a lot of everything on intuition and feeling and i just allow things to happen i'm kind of um against the norm so i don't i don't plan i don't schedule i don't really time block i just allow things to happen i like the flow of things so it's a little bit of a different mindset and that's okay because there's no right or wrong, right? Once you open up your mind and you realize there are different points of view, not everything works for everyone. So this works for me. That makes a lot of sense. So then with that type of approach, there's a great question here and that pertains to real estate yeah. right? on a challenges that we have as real estate agents when we're negotiating or dealing with other people's emotions. Paula is bringing up a great question. Just wondering how you handle hearing that the seller will not be contributing anything to the buyer's request for repairs. I have had a few deals in the last few weeks where buyers have paid way over asking price and the seller gives it zero towards the repairs. Tough on some of the buyers. How would you approach something like that? That's very specific. That's very specific. So if I have the buyer or the seller? You are representing the buyer. And the seller's like... Not going to do, not, not going to do anything. Do yep. So first, the first thing that you have to do is take your emotion out of it because it's, this is nothing to do with you. This is between the buyer and the seller. And um, we are just there to facilitate the deal. And secondly, if the seller is not willing to give anything, you ha- like the reality is we are in a super tight market. I can tell you that in my area, we're down 49% in inventory from last year. And so the buyer, if they want to purchase a home and they, and they find a home that they love, unfortunately, it's a seller's market. And so you have, what I would recommend is explaining to your buyer exactly that. It's a very tight market. If the sell, I, you know, I explain this to my buyers going into the process in this market. I want you to understand you are going to be paying top dollar, right? Mm -hmm. So I want you to understand that we're going to have an inspection. The seller may tell you that they don't want to give anything towards repairs. If you set that up front to the buyers, if you set that expectation up front, then there's no disappointment. That's very true. So you're setting the expectations before you even open up any escrow or go in under contract. Great point. So work on it before it happens because that's actually the, the key to a lot of things, right? We don't prepare for things that are happening. So we we, uh, we unexpectedly don't know what to do and people are mad at us in some cases. So great question. Paula says, right on. She loves it. Roxanne has a question for you that pertains to what you were saying before on, on the flow and your day, which I love. It says, Nikki, 
Uh, that was so interesting. What does your typical day look like? Because I do time block and it's so preached to us. Well, but what does your day look like? It is so preached to us. And guess what? We're programmed from a super young age to time block, right? In elementary school, we're told you're gonna have class from this time to this time and this time to this time. And for me, I just don't, I don't believe in, in that programming. I want to, I believe that that limits possibility. Once you put a, um, once you put a, a time block on something or a block or a goal, then you are blocking off what else is possible because you're blind to everything else, right? So there could be something incredible outside of that goal that you have limited yourself to because you're so focused on the goal. So for me, I just let things flow. I just allow them to come. All right. So then how would your typical day so look My like? typical day is um, I wake up and I listen to my mentors and it really uh, helps me focus getting into a positive mindset. Positive mindset is everything. And the highest vibration that you can be is in gratitude and appreciation for what you have. So for me, it's waking up and truly being grateful. And I remember a couple of years ago before I, I call it an awakening because I just woke up to the world and I realized that there's more to life than this hamster wheel that we're living on. So when I had that awakening and that understanding, um, before that I would be like, but I'm grateful. I'm, I'm grateful. I get it. Yes, I'm grateful. I, the, thank you. I have this thing. But once I realized what gratitude truly is, I wake up so grateful. So let me give you an example. You have a buyer that you've been working with for a year and then they come to you and they say, thank you so much for your help. I, we found a house through somebody else. You instantly, what, what generally happens to people is they go internal, they have a heaviness, they start coming up with all these stories in their mind. There's like anger and, and, you know, there's just a, a bad feeling. So in order to, to change that feeling, and it takes 17 seconds to attract negative vibrations. So once you, to spiral. So once you have a negative thought like that, you're gonna just keep having them unless you shift something. So what I do in situations like that is I will immediately contact five of my clients who are loyal and respect me and mm you know, love working with me and I will send them text messages, it's five clients. And I will say, I am so grateful that you're in my world. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Thank you for your loyalty. And it will shift how you think for the rest of the day. When you're grateful for things, it changes your life, like truly grateful. So that I spend my day trying to, I spend my day working on myself and I spend my day finding gratitude in things and being present. So another thing I used to, I used to be um, like, well, I'm present, right? I'm here, so I'm present. But what presence actually is, is not thinking about what things have happened in the past or what's gonna happen in the future. It's sitting at the lake and looking at the ducks and watching them flow or sitting in having a conversation and being completely present with Tristan and having this interview and not thinking about a hundred other things that we tend to do in our business. It's being present in the moment for what you're, um, for the, for the moment that you're in right now. That's so true. And, and one of those things that helps, I think with, with being aware in a moment is, is meditation, like just mm -hmm. taking in and, and really focusing in on breathing in and out simple, but, you push all these thoughts out that are coming in, right? And you just focus on, on one thing at a time. And all of a sudden, if you do this routinely, it starts allowing you to focus, right? And it's so powerful. And I think, I think it's, it's not talked about enough, so. Uh -huh. It's, you know, I think it's been really taboo up until recently, right? To talk about meditation and law of attraction and um, being in alignment and energy, right? That's been a kind of a taboo subject. Like we don't really talk about it, but a lot of people, a lot of successful people, that's how they live their life. It's, you know, the, the secret, if you see the documentary on, on Netflix, it's, um, really, it's really, we're all powerful 
beings and we all have manifestations. We all have visions and it's really tapping into that, tuning into that. Um, that is, that's the secret to success is releasing all of the stories that we've created from our past and being present and um, really living in joy and happiness and following the vibrations and the energy that, that call to you. So I think a lot, what, what happens to a lot of people is they live their life based on what other people's expectations are, right? So when mm -hmm. I first got into the industry, I was like, I'm going to be number one. My goal is to be the number one agent and I'm going to, and then you hit number one and you're like, well, now I have to have another achievement based goal. And <laughs> why is that? You know why that is? It's because it's, something internal you're trying to find happiness through external circumstances rather than looking within and figuring out what is it that's going to make me happy internally so why did i want to achieve all these things oh because when i was 10 um my parents praised me for being the first in class so maybe i'll get that feeling of feeling really good of being number one because we remember that feeling from when we were 10. so we're trying to recreate that so if we can heal from that and, and not have anything external trying to make us happy, that's, for me, that's the path that I'm, that I'm on, that I think is, is the, the path to happiness. And I, to I love that. Build. I, I think you said it very well. And, and for those of you that are thinking, well, law of attraction, crap, crap, crap. Because right. I, I hear that all the time. I go, well, you know, there's a scientific part to that and it's called the reticular activating system. That's what the law of attraction is. Your mind, your mind, all of a sudden, scientifically, we have a reticular activating system in our minds that starts focusing and filtering the things that we continually pay attention to. That's the scientific part to it. So yeah, it's, it's called the law of attraction, but scientifically. Some people aren't ready for that. That's okay. Yeah, it's, and it's okay. It's just the right. Electricity, right? You can believe in energy. If you yeah. can believe that things happen by the flick of a light and you don't know what's going on, you can believe in, in the magic that we can create as human beings. Somebody came yeah. up with that concept, right? Somebody came up with, like, we're amazing. Humans are amazing. That's, that's true. I mean, we, there are not even terms for some of the things we don't understand in our minds. Yet. Correct. That's key. All right. Let's, let's bring this that you're talking about mm -hmm. into real estate. Let's do it. So now over the last few months, you've done absolutely awesome in real estate. Tell me a little bit about what you've done just in the last two months or a month, just so people understand. So I did, uh, well, we, cause it's never I, there's never just an I. Um, it's who you surround yourself with. It's my, my the mentors that I listen to and it's um, my, my assistants and my- What mentors do you have? So I actually, um, I don't have a real estate coach. I have a, uh, transformational coach. His name's, he's not in real estate. Um, his name is Kyle Cease and he is a comedian turned transformational coach and he's incredible. He, so he puts some humor into it. So he, we talk about this stuff all the time and, um, releasing expectations and, and, um, limiting beliefs and all kinds of stuff. Like we go into really amazing things. Um, and then I, I listen to, you know, I listen to things that resonate with me. So, you know, when people ask like, Oh, what book can you recommend or what podcast or what, 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 what to me, it doesn't matter what resonates with me because what resonates with me may not resonate with you. If you are thinking of a subject that, piques your interest and somebody mentions it, that would be the way that I would pick a book, right? It's not, I don't, I don't necessarily read books based on people's suggestions because that might not resonate with me per se. So um, I totally, what was your question? I no, that's good. We, we, it was the but mentor yes. and before the mentor. Oh, so my mentors, okay, so I listen to a lot of stuff that is, about intuition, about law of attraction. I listen to Muji. I listen to Abraham Hicks. I listen to Wayne Dyer. I listen to like, those are my people. Those are the people that I really resonate with. And I listen I to Abraham Hicks every single day. 
because it just brings my energy like to a whole nother level. Awesome. All right. Thank you for that. Cause people asked now what has happened over the last two months in real estate in your business business yeah business wise what does that look like and then i'm like a square and and how'd you get there what do you (laughs) okay (laughs) so um you know what's really interesting is the minute i relaxed is when the business came i think that when when we get like stressed out and we're like oh my gosh i'm never gonna do business again the markets you know i'm not gonna find buyers i'm not gonna find sellers The universe, God does not have a sense of humor. So he's like, okay, fine, then you won't. Then you won't have buyers, then you won't have sellers. When you release all of that and you say, I am gonna, I come from abundance. I am gonna have so many buyers and sellers. So my assistant and I, we we do um, what's gonna happen in the future now. So I'll say to her, oh my gosh, do you remember that $2 million buyer that we were working with? Um, so we talk about six months in the future as if it was today, right? So I will have a conversation with her and I'll be like, um, I'll just pretend I'll, I'm talking to you, Tristan, okay? okay. So um, we're going to pretend that six months has passed since this interview, right? Okay. Tristan, do you remember when I was sitting talking to you and you were interviewing me and you were asking me all about these sellers? Uh, do you, like, since that time, it's been incredible, you have like explode. So we will do it to each other, but I'll just pretend you want to do it to me. So I have worked with seven different sellers, million dollar sellers. It's been amazing. Like they've all referred their clients to me. I am now so successful with the million dollar range that people just keep coming to me. They know that I'm the person in that price point. And so we, we have these conversations and when you, can envision it before it happens. It actually happens. Your brain doesn't know the difference between reality and the future. So if you can program your brain to think that these things are happening, I watch it happen. You manifest it. I love that. That's very true. Very true. All right. So then bringing that into so bringing business. it back to what's happening to me. So yeah. I, did, um, in the month of August, we did 6 million. I'm probably on track to do about, for September. I have traveled like quite a lot, but very socially distanced traveling. Um, So I went to Sedona because I need to get away sometimes. So I went hiking. I am just living like, uh, I don't want to do things that don't bring me joy. Life's too short. So if there are things that are happening and and activities that I don't want to do, I will leverage that. Because the more joy that I can bring to myself, the more joy I can bring to other people. All so right. it's all about leveraging. For me, uh, to have done six million as a single agent, um, you know, I I hate to say this, but I don't prospect. Um, I do run a Facebook group, which has I've nurtured to sixteen thousand people locally. Uh, so I do a lot of um, face-to-face in there. So people recognize me, they know who I am and they refer me based on that. But really it's just, I wanna help people who feel that I can help them. So it's, again, I truly believe that I attract the flow of people that come to me. You do, you definitely do. So let's talk a little bit about where, where the leads that you have are coming from mm-hmm. because you don't prospect, but you use Facebook and social really well. So can you talk a little bit about how you do that? Yeah. So, you know, I run this Facebook group. I don't pay for leads. I've never paid for leads up until this point. Um, I do a lot of social media. I mean, that's really the, the way that social media and referrals and sphere is how I get most of my leads. I run this Facebook group with 16,000 people in it. And what I, um, what I do is on, if you look at my personal page and you're not my Facebook friend, you'll see that most of my public Facebook posts are about real estate. And then if you're friends with me, you'll see that, you know, I put my kids in there and my personal stuff, but when people, uh, go to join my Facebook group, they instinctively look up who I am and I want them to see me as the local real estate expert. So it's a very strategic way of kind of 
keeping top of mind in, in real estate and um, having people recognize who I am when they come into the group. I love that. All right. So that's the Facebook group. Now let's talk about your sphere. How do you stay on top of them so that they remember you? What is it that you do actively? Um, I am just really good at what I do and they remember it. And I, I just, I'm very passionate about every single deal that I do. And so they just refer me when they're looking for an agent. They know, like my clients know that they're going to get the best service with me and they're going to get the best. They will sell for the highest amount of money and they will buy for the lowest amount of money. I negotiate really well for them. I look out for them. And so really it's them remembering that. And once you, you know, once you go through a really good experience, you, you remember that. I'm also, I also make sure that I Facebook friend every single client that I have. Ooh, I like that. So then they see you, right? And they see me. So I don't have to be calling them all the time because I'm constantly posting. Uh, I there's also make sure that I comment. Like, why don't we comment and like and love? You do this a lot, actually, which is great. But why aren't we commenting and, and, and you know, giving attaboys to anyone in our newsfeed? Like, if you see a picture and you're like, oh, that's really cute, but you don't like it, why aren't you liking it? First of all, it makes that person feel great that, like, you know, just it just does. And it's a good way for you to be top of mind with that person. So it's like a win-win. It. So anytime... And I try and like and love and comment on every single post, whether it's an agent, whether it's, you know, if I'm online, whether it's an agent, whether it's a past client, keep top of mind and build those relationships through social media because I don't love making the phone calls. So I'm not going to do what I don't love, but I love being on social media and hiding behind my little profile picture. I'm happy to like it and love it. And, you know, so that, that's kind of what I do. I love it. Well, look, we, we, we're already a minute over. I have last question for you yeah. here. And that's what sets you apart as a real estate agent that people remember you? Uh, I think for me, it's my one thing, which is my Facebook group. I think that people, um, I've added a lot of value to people. I had a listing that I sold um, a couple of months ago, last month, I can't remember that was 1.7 and I got that listing through a person who was in my Facebook group for years and I never knew her and she just all of a sudden popped up and said, I would really, you've added so much value to my life over the last three years. I'd really like you to be the listing agent for my property. So it's really, you know, it's a powerful tool. Facebook is a powerful tool, social media. If you do it right, if you're not salesy, if you're not, you know, um, putting your, just be authentic. It, life is about being authentic. It's like, imagine if we all walked into an elevator and instead of saying, how's the weather? You were like, you are really attractive. Like, why don't we just say what's on our mind? Why do we hide what we think the other person wants to hear? But it's not right. Yeah. It's amazing. Human nature is amazing. So I, I try to be as authentic as possible. That is my MO is like, if you want honesty, if you want somebody who's going to tell you how it is, come to me. I'll let you know. I love that. All right, Nikki, thank you so much for being You're on welcome. again. What, what areas in Florida do you cover just in case people want to send you referrals? Cause you got a lot I of love. love that. Yeah. Um, Boca Raton, Florida, Palm beach County, parts of Broward County, Parkland, Coral Springs, Coconut Creek, um, Delray beach, West Palm beach. All that kind of I love it. All right. Well, thank you for being yeah. on. You're awesome. Great job. Great energy. Thank you. thank you for the authenticity. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Bye.